Hello guys, how are you? Uh, today I want to discuss a feature called direct invoicing which is available in purchase agreement. This feature is very useful if you want to manage uh, rental agreements uh, using purchase agreement. You can create a rental agreement and then you can create invoices against that rental agreement uh, and you don't need to create purchase orders. So you can directly create invoicing against those uh, you know rental agreements and then you can see a report where system show that you have 12 month contract you have invoiced this amount and the remaining amount is there so you can do that easily so let me show how we can do that <coughs> so in direct invoicing what we will do is we will first create a purchase agreement in the purchase agreement classification we will toggle a button called direct invoicing and then based on that configuration we will create a purchase agreement and then we will create and post a vendor invoice against that purchase agreement and says, I will show you that how system keeps record how much amount is remaining so it will be easy and then we will review a report called fulfillment report and it will give us a good picture of how much the agreement worth was and how much we have invoiced yet okay so let's directly move to the demo okay so let's go to setups first so purchase order procurement and sourcing sorry and then in setups you will go and select purchase agreement classification you can create a new record called rent lease agreement and just toggle this button called required direct invoicing so this is the key configuration okay you create a new one called rental lease agreement I have already done it and you can just then toggle this button called required direct invoicing okay and then you can also uh, enable search features so these are the features you need might need to uh, enable from feature management which requires like if you want the line matching on two way matching three way matching how you want to define that so that you can do as well so right now I have done two way matching to be very honest it's for me for the scenario I'm showing it's not required but these features can be enabled and this primary worker secondary responsible worker these both the things can be enabled from uh, your feature management okay so once that is done we will save I have already record created this record so I'm gonna go to purchase agreements and create my agreement I'll click new I will select my vendor this will full you know fill all the all the default section of the form I will then select my agreement like I want to use the rental lease agreement this is for direct invoicing and I can use you know vendor reference ABC before and if they have provided any document with you know a physical document and there are some document reference number you want to put you can do that contract and then I want to base this on procurement categories I don't want to use an item but it's up to you how do you want to use it I will prefer to use a procurement category value commitment so I'm gonna just select this procurement category value commitment okay and then the start and expiry date so it's gonna start from 1st of Jan and it's gonna end on December so 12 month contract and I will say okay okay once the header is done what we need to do is we need to select uh, the procurement category so my category will be rent I will click OK so this is selected I will just select my site and then the quantity is obviously one it's, no, it's usually not required so we're not we're not uh, you know 
in using quantity using net amount so this amount this thing is in uh, enable the quantity is this uh, you know blocked so uh, over here you need to be very smart for example if the 12 month contract is like is 12000 per month then you will multiply it by 12 that's your total amount but also you have to include the tax maybe maybe there is tax right maybe you have an other than rental agreement you have some uh, electricity rent agreement so in the electricity agreement you might need tax so you have to include that in in the net amount so if i multiply by 1.15 in new zealand we usually have 15 percent gst so this will be my total amount i'm just telling you that you need to include the gst amount in the total contract okay so 165 600 165 600 and yep yeah, expiring on this and then the, we all I already know that this 12,000 uh, it's not 12,000 I have to divide this thing divide by 12 okay it's 13 uh, thousand and eight hundred per month so I will see 3 13 800 minimum and I also set 13 800 at maximum so i don't want anyone to you know uh in invoice against this specific order more than 13 uh 800 uh f for that month okay so this will ensure that we are also have to click this called max in enforce is enforced so system will not allow anyone to exceed this am amount for that particular month okay so that's again how you want to configure so if I save once save you have to confirm this because by default the status will be on hold so you, you have to post the confirmation you can also put workflows on it maybe you want to get this one approved by someone so you can do that as well right now in my scenario I haven't put any workflows okay so I will just press confirm this will generate the confirmation you mark this agreement is effective it's gonna change the status yes it's ready and we can now create uh, invoices against this uh, particular uh, agreement so let's do that P module AP and I will select pending vendor invoices here just need to press new then you will select your supplier as normal my system is a little bit slow today supplier you will see that you have this related document and all those things here and you can see that there's a thing called purchase agreement as well so what you can do is just you know select and just select this agreement the purchase agreement system or totally lock the agreement from here and it's actually understand that you're doing and you know a posting on this date and it automatically brought up my line as well of 13,800 uh, so remember that I have included the GST in uh, in uh, in the total amount so maybe maybe you want to you know uh, put minimum amount as 12,000 and maximum on 13,800 which is included inclusive of the uh, sale tax so it's it's up to you how you want to configure it you can you can check right now in my scenario sale tax was not important but what I've done is I've included the sale tax in the total amount of the uh, contract and then I've also put it in the minimum uh, minimum maximum amount as well so now system is in automatically bring up my maximum amount so and you just need to save
and update match status that's that's can be avoided by a uh, few setups and then just post and I have to define sorry I have to define the invoice number as well description rent expense for the month of Jan save and then yeah I just need to re-perform it sorry okay so I've done everything I put the invoice number I put the invoice description and yeah invoice date let's just do it today and now this is ready and just post because I forgot to do one thing for invoicing you just have to type quantity one it has no value but you have to do it because it just we are using the procurement category and system does require at least a uh, quantity one okay I wanna just for safe side put unit as well so if you don't want the procurement category you can always use the item as well it's up to you but uh, with the procurement category uh, for invoicing it's important to define at least one quantity so when update match status and press post so once the invoice posted you can always go to AP module and then click on open vendor invoices and quickly search for the invoice on the posting date so let's just sort it on the newest date so you can see that my invoice was posted and this was the posting date okay so next step is to review the fulfillment report so before we do that let's just go back to the purchase agreement and see a few things if i click purchase agreements and i click on my agreement and if i go to the line section and fulfillment i will see that the remaining amount is this 151 and the invoice amount is this so system keep records that you have actually committed for this amount and you have invoiced this amount and the remaining amount is this you can also see this uh, in the fulfillment report so if I click here go back just select purchase agreement fulfillment report if you want to navigate you can just go to procurement and sourcing module and the, under the purchase agreement you will see purchase agreement fulfillment report you can either select your agreement or you can run it for all of them so I'm gonna just run it for all of them okay so in this report again you can see with this my agreement with this agreement that I have the total amount of this I got the start date end date invoice amount and the remaining amount so if it's if I do another invoice for February it will add this to this amount and the remaining amount will be less so you will have a quickly uh, overview of uh, you know what amount you have paid against that rent or uh, what amount you have invoiced again like in this rent agreement so rather using vendor uh, invoice journals we can use this feature like we can create a rent agreement liquidity agreements and then directly create invoicing invoices against that agreement okay so my suggestion will be use this direct invoicing option rather than using vendor invoice journals okay so that's the end of the video thank you for watching Keep subscribing and let me know your feedback. Thank you.